Welcome back to our Bible study series. This week we're looking at the reading for Sunday, May the 9th, 2021. It is Galatians chapter 1, verses 13 to 17, and chapter 2, verses 11 to 21. If you haven't had a chance to read the passage yet, then I encourage you to take a moment and pause the video and do so. Read it in your favorite Bible translation, or use the link that is below in the details section. If you don't have time to read the passage, here's a short summary of the second part at Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 21. There's two parts to that reading. It's been titled by the translators of the NRSV as Paul rebukes Peter at Antioch and Jews and Gentiles are saved by faith. Now, the summary for Galatians 2 verses 11 to 21 has Paul starting out by telling the reader that he rebuked Peter because Peter was no longer following the way of the Jews. He had met with Gentiles and adopted some of their ways. Paul then goes on to teach that it's not by living according to the law that people are saved. Paul makes it clear that it's through faith that we find that we are saved. When I read this passage over, it is this, uh, this piece from chapter 2, verse 16, that stuck for me. Yet we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And there's two words in particular, law and faith. Now, while we might know what laws are here in this time, and granted, we, unless we're a really stellar lawyer, probably won't know all of them, and we might not even agree with all of them, we know that in an ideal situation, Laws are meant to keep us safe, to govern how we live together, and to bring some sort of sense of security to us. But what about in a biblical understanding? I found this quote in a Greek-English lexicon of the New Testament and other early Christian literature. It says that the law is a collection of holy writings, precious to the Jew. Now this leads me to our first question for today. What writings do you think are precious? Now the answer could be scripture or non-scripture. Maybe there's a piece of poetry or fiction that you find so moving that you'd consider it precious. Maybe there's a piece of nonfiction that you believe is so important that you would consider it precious. Would you include the laws that we currently live under as precious? I encourage you to take a moment, pause the video, and answer that question. What writings do you think are precious? Faith was the other word that stood out for me in this passage. We talk about being a people of faith, and we talk about there being many faiths in the world. Now, we can have faith in other people. We can even have faith in organizations or not have faith in either of them. Sometimes faith can be built up and 
Sometimes it can be betrayed. But what is faith? I found this in the Greek-English lexicon of the New Testament based on semantic domains. Faith is to believe to the extent of complete trust and reliance, to believe in, to have confidence in, to have faith in, to trust, faith, trust. It is this interplay between faith and trust, and in particular, the word complete, that made me begin to question this definition of faith. At times, we make decisions based on complete faith, complete trust. We know others who have done that as well. Having complete trust or faith in the surgeon who's going to perform surgery is generally a good thing. Having complete trust or faith in the person who's looking after your finances is generally a good thing. However, what does complete trust in God look like? Now that leads us to the second question for today. What does it mean to have faith or complete trust in God? Now, before you delve into that question, please remember that Peter had doubts. The one on whom the church was built, Thomas, had doubts. And it's natural for us to have doubts. I'm not thinking about the, the ideal of, of faith being complete trust. But I am wondering about the reality in our situation. Given the fact that we will doubt each one of us at different times and for different reasons, what does it mean to still have faith? or still find a way to have complete trust in God. And if at the moment your doubts are bigger than your trusts, that's okay. God can handle that fact. God was still able to work through Peter and Thomas and through each one of us as we've had our doubts over time. So I encourage you to know to take a moment again to pause the video and to answer that question. What does it mean to have faith or complete trust in God? Well, now that you've taken some time to answer all those questions, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I believe that the church does have something to offer to the world in finding ways to live together through precious texts and in finding ways to have faith in one another, even in the midst of doubt. We can only build up the world to be a better place if we live together peacefully and trust in each other. I hope you'll join me again on Wednesday of next week as we look at Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. Until then, peace, blessings, and I hope you and those you love are well.